welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, I want to talk about worry and fear on the weight loss journey and how, you know, worry can really sabotage you. And um, I think that this is something I've certainly struggled with a lot, not just in the beginning. It was it was something in the beginning that kept me from even trying to lose weight. Um, along the weight loss journey, worry would start to sabotage my efforts. And I, I've been in a constant process of learning how to stop worrying so much. I'm kind of a natural born worrier. I mean, when I was growing up, my mom called me a worry wart because that's what I was. I was always, always worried. I mean, uh, I guess some people are just built this way. I don't know. Um, but I constantly think, uh, was thinking, you know, as a kid, I was worried about, you know, uh, a lot of times I was worried about getting cancer or, um, you know, uh, after I had kids, I was constantly worried they'd get sick. And there have been several books that have helped me with this. Um, and the most recent one, though, that really has changed my perspective is a book called The Gift of Fear. And it's by Gavin De Becker. And uh, I found that this book gave me a whole lot of peace and it tied a couple of things together um, that that I had, you know, kind of read in different books. And so I want to share with you today, um, you know, how, how I have learned to deal with worry, how to how to try to eliminate it or at least not let it rule my life and, and how that has looked in the weight loss journey. Now, this book, The Gift of Fear, it's kind of an odd one to talk about because it talks a lot about murder and stalking, a lot of really scary things, like actually real life scary things. The good thing, though, is in this book, he lays out the difference. True fear is a gift because it is our natural gut instinct. It is our survival instinct that will kick in when you are actually threatened. It is the thing that will keep you alive, that will make you fight and give you strength that you didn't even know that you had. And as long as you listen to that inner voice, that intuition, that God-given intuition that we all have, it will keep you safe. It will help you survive. But the thing is, we also have worry, which is not true fear. And, and the way he explains it, and I think this is a really good thing, because it's always hard to know, or at least for me, it was always hard to know, like, what what is, you know, fear uh, versus, you know, what is actually just worry? And the way he explains it is that fear has to do with something that's actually in your environment at this very instant. It is that, that thing, that unsafe thing that you know that's happening. And, and so it's that gut instinct. On the other hand, worry is a fear that you are manufacturing inside your imagination. So for example, uh, for me, uh, that looks like uh, pretty much any time my husband goes to the grocery store, I worry, you know, what if he gets in a car accident? What, you know, what if, what if he, you know, uh, runs off the road, something like that. That is worry. That's a manufactured thing in my head. Like I'm creating that situation. It's not to do with anything that's based in reality. And I found that this is so true of things in the weight loss journey, um, th different fears that I, I would just manufacture. For example, like uh, I would think, oh, but what if, what if I do this, uh, you know, what if I lose this weight and it just, it kills my metabolism? Well, that was something that I was just making up in my head. It had nothing to do with what was actually in reality. It was just this manufactured thing. I, I would be afraid of what, what if I do lose weight and I, you know, like I'm successful at losing weight and I'm like a thin person, uh, you know, like that I would somehow uh, become a jerk. Like that was a fear. Like that was all in my head. It had nothing to do with actual reality. I mean, sometimes it was because of all the stuff about keto out there. There were times where I started to worry about sugar and all this stuff. And I eventually started to realize like, oh, that's all just kind of made up in my head. It's stuff that's not based in reality because, you know, when I, when I really sat down um, and, and thought about things, I started to realize like throughout all of human history, we've been eating all the foods. Like we didn't know how many carbs were in things up until, you know, just very recently in our human history. And we've always just eaten food. Like we naturally know what to eat and we naturally can just stay healthy. 
And, you know, certainly with intermittent fasting, that was a place where I had a lot of worries because it was something I was not really familiar with. I didn't know anybody who uh, was actually practicing this. So I had a lot of worries around like, well, how might this affect my body? And again, it was all things in my head. I eventually had to just realize that, you know, I can only know when I've actually started to do the thing. When I start to put this all into practice, then if something comes up, if something actually happens, that's the time to start to take action. It's, you know, all this getting bogged down in worry, I realized was keeping me obese. And I eventually had to realize that's a lot more dangerous to me, you know, to just stay being obese than it is to take some risks or, or at least perceived risk and, and do the things um, that I'm not sure how it will work out. But ultimately, I did get down to a healthy weight, and I feel better, much better now than I ever have. And I thought it was really interesting in in the book, The Gift of Fear. He talks about how important it is to learn how to say no. Because if you don't know how to say no to someone, that, that's when people get in trouble. They become a victim because they won't stand up for themselves. They won't uh, say no and have people listen to their no. And This made me uh, think of another book called Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. And those books are are actually quite related because when it comes down to it, it's important to have boundaries. And and an attacker, somebody who wishes to do you harm, is going to violate your boundaries. But you have to be able to say no. And this relates to the weight loss journey because... Uh, Many times we're not good at saying no to ourselves. We're not good at having a boundary with food. And what I found was as I began to set up boundaries for myself around food, telling myself no, I started to realize that I could start to say no to other people. And I first had to do it for myself. You know, I started with myself because you are the safest person, right? Like you're stuck with you. You know that no matter what, you have you. And um, and then you can start to kind of baby step it out and start to say no uh, to other people. You know, maybe, maybe your husband is a good example. My husband is, uh, you know, super, super sweet. And I realized, you know, I can start to tell him no on things, like to just say no to something. And that's really hard for me. It doesn't come natural to me to say no. Um, But learning how to do that has made it so that um, I feel much stronger, like I can stand up for myself much more than I could several years ago. So if you're the type of person who worries a lot, if you're like me and you kind of have that natural tendency and the worry is just making you miserable, um, I would offer these book recommendations to you. First of all, The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. He, he's a um, security expert um, and, and he's seen a lot. And like I said, the book does have a lot of violence in it um, based in reality, but the book overall uh, really helped me to not worry. (laughs) It it, it was kind of a counterintuitive thing, but it really has helped me. The second book is Boundaries by uh, Dr. Uh, Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. That's another book. Now, it's written from a Christian perspective, just so you know. Uh, There's a lot of scripture in there. So if you're not a Christian, just be aware going into it that that's the kind of book it is. But that book really put me on a good track towards learning how to set up boundaries in my own life. And the third book that has really helped me is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. Now, that's an older book, and um, so it may seem a little old-fashioned. However, the stories uh, in that book, even though it was written so long ago, I believe they still apply to this day. There's so many good things that I've learned from that book, and I've applied it into my own life, and it's made my life much better, and it's helped me to worry a whole lot less. Now, again, I'm a work in progress here. I feel like I worry a whole lot less than I used to, but I do catch myself slipping into the habit of worry. But I do think it's an important thing to work on because, especially for me, I tended to be an emotional eater. I would eat because I was stressed. So learning how to not worry is an important part to me, not overeating and not, you know, just eating because I'm nervous. So if you are the type of person like I am who has that tendency to worry, I would encourage you to read these books and work on getting worry out of your life because I think you'll find it helps make the weight loss journey a whole lot easier and your life just more enjoyable. Thank you for joining me in this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. 
Today's episode was brought to you by my book, The Laidback Guide to Intermittent Fasting, How I Lost Over 80 Pounds and Kept It Off Eating Whatever I Wanted. To get your copy, simply follow the link in the show notes.